Hello AWS friends! In this lesson let's see how to secure your API Gateway with Cognito. In the last lesson we have seen API Gateway, we covered a lot of topics concerning API Gateway and its features. And let's see our situation. We created two APIs. Um, the first one, the pet store, which was a simple API we created with uh, the web console. And we created the second API with CloudFormation. So this is this one. It's still here visible in the stacks. And we mentioned there's a such thing like to secure your methods with an authorization. And let's have a look today on how to do this with Cognito User Pool. So the first thing you need is a Cognito User Pool. I already created one in here. You can just say also say new pool. Let's see what are the most important features of the user pool because as you can see it has a lot of features. The first thing you see is the overview page and the important thing to remember is the pool ID. We're gonna need the pool ID for our um, lambda function which will authorize against the user pool and return a token for the API functions. Next thing is users and groups. We're gonna create a user in here later on. You have some attributes on how to, which standard attributes you need. I kept it easy, just an email, um, email addresses, phone number, a lot of stuff here. Password policy, so minimum length and special characters and all this stuff. Multi-factor authentication, advanced security. We don't cover this in here, important feature is the message custom customization. On this page you can define the message your users will receive when you create them and they can for example return a temporary password and change this. Um, important thing is a login URL and to make this work um, you, we have to talk about these domains a little bit later on. Um, so this string will work to um, send an email to your user with its username, with its password and with a link to click to change this contemporary password. We don't need tags for now, we know also don't need devices, but a very important point is the client apps. You will need a client app to log in in Cognito. As you can see I already created one named API Gateway. You can simply create one by giving it a name and enable some um, of these options. For example, a sign in AP for server based authentication, username, password, and then you have a client app, you have a client ID. We're gonna need this also for our Lambda function, and you have a client secret. Um, secret we also have to pass to our lambda function to receive this secret. Triggers a little bit advanced function we won't cover this now. Important thing is the domain name. Let's have a look on this. You have to create a domain in here so your link to um, change the password for your users can work. First of course you have to own your domain. You can use a prefix for your domain you have to um, you need a certificate before you can create this domain in here you can create a certificate and a certificate manager in my case I'm using this certificate I created this one in North Virginia and once you created your domain you can check your um, login string to change the password or to log in we're gonna do this a little bit later. In this app line settings you can define some parameters for the apps we have created here in the app clients. We can define callback URLs and some features for authentication. These options work for me. Take a look what you need. But if you're going to try um, your API um, authorization you 
can start with these options. This is our second M we just have created, as you might remember. You have also the chance to define some identity providers. For example, you can synchronize with your Windows users, you can use Facebook. We won't cover this, um, we don't need this for our API authentication. For the first uh, overview for the user pool and for Cognitude, this will work. Now let's have a look on our API, API gateway and configure Cognito. Once you have created your Cognito user pool, you can create a authorizer in the API which you want to secure. Let's say create an authorizer, name it Cognito. And by now you should be able to choose your user pool. And now let's enter authorization for the token source and they create. Once you have defined this authorizer, you should be able to define the authorization for your message. Let's try this with this pet get method. Authorization in the method execution. And by now it's not visible. We have to refresh. By now you should be able to select Cognito user pool as an authorization method. So now we have changed our authorization for our methods. We have to do one thing to make this work. We have to deploy our API. I'm going to deploy it to the end stage. And now let's have a look if our changes will work. So I take a look in my stage, in my in stage. I have just deployed it in the in stage. And here is my pets get method, which used to work, but now it says unauthorized. So pretty fine. Cognito is working. Our method is secured. But yet we are not enabled to log in. So let's see how we can do this. We create our authentication API and our Lambda function. Let's first create a user with who we can log in. We want an email. I'm using a contemporary password and I will send this to my email address. And by now I should receive an email and can change my password. I just received the email from Cognito and now let's log in. Now I have to change the password. And now I'm logging in and once this is completed, let's have a look on Cognito. Our user should be confirmed. Pretty cool. And now we can use this user in our Lambda function to log in incognito and we can use this user to authenticate against our API. To authenticate against Cognito, we need a Lambda function as I said. And to publish this Lambda function so it is available from outside our account a API would be <coughs> a good idea and therefore I'm gonna create both of these things with CloudFormation, my CloudFormation stack though it's creating a simple health lambda function just saying hello um, a pre-designed function which is not this important it's just adding a string to our auto confirm user true to the um, um, input string the important part is this one, the login lambda function. And therefore, as I said, we need our user pool ID, we need our client ID, and we need our client secret. We're gonna pass this as parameters to our um, CloudFormation stack. And then it will log in again against Cognito and return a token. This is the lambda and the lambda permissions, and then it will create a API, a health method for the API, 
and a login resource and of course a login request post. Let's try this. Let's switch to um, CloudFormation and create our authentication API. So I'm gonna, gonna give it a name. This is my authentication API. I was entering my certificate, my client ID, the client secret. This one is hidden. You also need a custom domain if you want, uh, if you want to make your authentication method available with a much easier domain than the um, API gateway domains. And as I said, you need the user pool ID. Let's say next, next, and create. You will find this CloudFormation stack in my GitHub account. You find the link below the video. So you just have to adapt the parameters. You need your uh, user pool ID, client ID, client secret, and your certificate um, for the um, custom domain. Now our authentication is in creation. Let's have a look. And I'm gonna pause for a second until this one is really ready. Our new Cognito Authentication API is now available with this domain. You have to do one more thing. You have to add this target domain to your root 53. You have to create a CNAME record pointing to your um, API gateway. Just paste your um, target domain name and then it should be available. Let's switch to Postman. And now this is our health method. Our API is available. And now let's make a login. And see, we need a header. We have to use our username. We have to use our password for Cognito. And now we will receive a token. And we can use this token for the authentication against our other methods. Now I'm going to copy this token. Let's have a look on our pet method. It says authorized, of course. Now we have to enter a authorization key in the header. And the value is our token from Cognito. And with this token, our method works pretty really fine. So, let's switch back to our API gateway. So what we did, uh, we created a Cognito user pool. We created a app client, um, a message for our users to, to look in. We created our own domain. We configured something in our application client settings. Once we are ready with this, you can define a authorizer for your API message, which you want to secure. Once you have created this Cognito authorizer, you can use it in your message. You have to switch to message request and enter Cognito as authorization method. And then to be able to use your methods, you first have to call the Cognito authorization method. With your username and password, you will receive a token. And this token, you can call your secured API methods and they will return their result. So far for API Gateway and Cognito, thanks for listening and see you on the next lesson.